The other major revolution for us to look at is Cuba. I know the socialist experiment is sometimes how it's referred to. Now, Cuba is a prime example of how the Cold War almost got very hot. In the 1950s, Cuba was known for beaches, nightclubs, and well-known musicians. But the casinos in Havana were mob-controlled, prostitution was rampant, and dictator Fulgencio Bautista did not allow any democratic freedoms. Now, Fidel Castro, the man on the right, was a man of the middle class, and he was privileged, and he became a professional revolutionary. He was thrown in prison in 1953 for attempting to attack an army barracks, and he went into exile in Mexico City in 1955. He formed a friendship with Che Guevara, the man on the left, and Che had just arrived from Guatemala. Che joined Castro's rebel band. The two left for Cuba the next year and took refuge in the Sierra Maestra Mountains. Over the next two years, Castro's band raided police stations and military barracks to stockpile ammunition, and they recruited members from the local population. Che had a medical background, but his greatest value was as a commander and tactician. He would often execute suspected government agents on the spot without anything resembling a fair trial. That's how committed he is to the cause and how ruthless he is. Now, the rebels were in a position to take Havana in 1958, and Bautista fled on New Year's Day 1959 when the rebels marched into the capital. Fidel Castro actually went to New York and D.C. to try and rally support, but relations soured when Cuba passed the Agrarian Reform Law and nationalized land that was owned by American corporations. Castro was publicly portrayed as a Soviet threat 90 miles south of Florida, and it really didn't help that Bautista's forces had fled to the United States and were lobbying for an invasion to overthrow Castro. This caused the new Cuban government to focus on protecting the revolution as opposed to defending civil liberties. Castro never officially joined the Cuban Communist Party because he preferred a populist approach as opposed to a hardline Marxism. But he felt that he had no choice but to seek Soviet protection because of the looming threat that was posed by the United States. This was the backdrop for which the Eisenhower administ uh, administration devised plans for an invasion of Cuba to overthrow the regime. And in spring of 1961, an American-sponsored group of Cuban exiles stormed ashore at the Bay of Pigs in Cuba. Now, this was planned under Eisenhower. John F. Kennedy okayed the invasion, but only gave it lukewarm support, and the air support they were supposed to receive was withdrawn. And this invasion was a massive failure, and only validated Castro's opinion that the United States is out to get him. And the U.S. responded with an economic embargo on Cuba, so diplomacy and compromise were officially off the table. Now, tensions between the U.S. and Cuba reached their peak in 1962. Castro believed that the U.S. would never allow his socialist experiment to proceed in peace, so he formed close ties with the Soviet Union. Khrushchev used this as an opportunity to secretly ship nuclear weapons to Cuba. This was a departure from the previous Soviet position of focusing on their own borders and immediate sphere of influence. American surveillance detected the missiles, so Kennedy issued an ultimatum. Withdraw the missiles or face nuclear annihilation. Each side understood what that meant, and neither truly wanted it, so the Soviets withdrew their missiles from Cuba, while the Americans withdrew missiles that they had in Turkey. Now, to assist with their efforts to deal with the American embargo, the Soviets bought the sugar supply of the entire island at above market prices, and they subsidized the island's economy with cheap fuel and agricultural machinery. The Cubans had good housing and food, were well-educated, and had access to free health care. Since the Soviet Union was the patron of Cuba, the island was extremely reliant on agricultural exports. Further development 
was hampered by the command style economy that the Cubans used, modeled after the Soviets. When Cuban workers demanded higher wages, Minister of Health Che Guevara told them that they should be content in the knowledge that they were working to advance the cause of socialism. Now, Che Guevara actually did work long hours for little personal reward, but realistically, that's not how the world works. There were no material rewards or incentives to inspire creativity. And Castro's speeches really didn't change the fact that workers still faced shortages of basic goods. So the Cuban Revolution will be similar to what happened in France and Russia. Leaders were faced with the prospect of counter-revolution, and they ended up suspending the promises they had earlier made of democratic liberties, and they believed dissent to be synonymous with treason. The government believed that all opposition stemmed from the United States, specifically the migrant community of Cuban exiles in Florida. Hundreds were executed and thousands were sent to work in gulag-style camps. Guevara believed that this was the cost of maintaining the revolution and overthrowing American imperialism. Now, Guevara actually left for Africa in 1965 to pursue his dream of global revolution. He was unsuccessful in the Congo, and then finally, when he made his way back to the Western Hemisphere, he was captured in Bolivia and executed by CIA-backed Bolivian forces. <laughs>